Okay, so I'm just moving the camera into position. And I'm going to zoom it in a little there with my fingers. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to wait until there's some people on board. I'm going to check out this fabric, uh, fabric thread. And um, G'day guys, um, I can see you starting to hop online now. So I'm just checking out to see whether this will actually pull through that hole easily. So bear with me just while I check it out. Sure will. That is awesome. Okay. So I'm just moving it from that position. Oops. Okay, so I'll just put the comments there so I can see. Um, I can see um, Chris, Reddo, Terry. I was wondering the early class live had visitors and missed it. Oh, and, <laughs> and the housework. <laughs> I've had visitors. Ah, oh, what a shame. You can always uh, watch it later and I'm going to put it on YouTube. So I have had a play with this... Um, thread that I've got in there. I'm just bringing up my bobbin this time around. Um, so I've got my bobbin thread there. I'm just making sure you guys can see. I'm just going down. There we go. <clears throat> Alright, so I've got my bobbin thread up. I've got this Sort of wool sort of stuff like a ribbon almost i'm going behind that thread i haven't it's underneath the foot and i'm going behind it and i'm going to pull that forward i'm going to hold on to those tails of um the sewing machine thread just get that out of the way it's just been a bit of a booger there we go so i've got those pull that through now Pull it forward and then put your needle down. Um, uh, hi Dottie, um, Annie, it is four o'clock here just after. So to do couching, you need to have a couching foot. This is free motion couching. <clears throat> this foot is a westerly foot. It's called a decorative foot. And it has a plastic insert and a hole through the center for your wool to come through. So I've pulled up the uh, bobbin and then I've done an extra stitch and I'm just pulling that wool or thread whatever you want to call it ribbon through there um, I'm just making sure I've got all the little bits and pieces I'm going to bring the tail of that wool up so that it is pretty oops a daisy pretty much at the start come on darling there we go, through you come, there we are. So my foot down, and I'm going to put the needle down. Um, I did see it push the thread then, or the fabric I should say. And I'm just moving my stuff. Then this wool is really, really, I've got it sort of all sitting here. There's no tension on it at all. It's It's got a lot of slack. As soon as I start getting any kind of tension on the wool, that's when I'll stop and reposition. So you'll need your gloves. you need your gloves and um, my free motion foot doesn't have the plastic. It is, um, it is a westerly ruler. Yeah, so that would have been just a standard um, ruler foot. This one here is a decorative one. They're about $42, um, which is not too bad for a ruler foot. And um, that um, I do have them in stock if you need them. Um, I'm going to slow the machine down just so I know how she's going. Um, I've only got it set on straight stitch because I want to stop there. 
just want to see what's going on underneath. Just make sure it's pulling along. It can be a little bit tricky when you first start. Sometimes better than others. I've got a fabric on the back here. It must have a bit of sizing in it because it's quite, um, quite sticky, sort of grabbing. So I'm hoping that um, it doesn't play funny buggers too much. So I'm just stitching along and I move the thread or the wool, whatever you decide to use, a ribbon or, and I'm moving it in the direction that I'm sewing. So, oops a days, um, I just did that. So, I'll just uh, re thread that again. So if that's any indication of what I do, when I sew, oh good Jan, that's good. Glad you love them. I hope so, otherwise I'd be sitting here all day doing them, talking to myself, wouldn't I? <laughs> uh, oops a daisy, I missed it. So the idea is to catch the ribbon wall or whatever you're using as you go through. Is it in that hole? Hmm, I don't think it is. No. Alright, so I'll just hand thread it. Put my lock on. And uh, my hand under there. Eh, eh, eh. It's cool to watch. Come on. There you go. All right. Come on. There we go. Don't be nasty. So it's got to be in the direction you're going and the reason why that is is so that you catch that ribbon the other thing you can do is put it into zigzag and when you do that you need to have it really small zigzag like 0.5 or 6 or whatever and just making sure that it doesn't hit the side of your your little plastic insert <laughs> And with a bit of luck, we'll just keep going. So it's a tiny little zigzag. It should help with catching that. I'm just going to trim that off. I'll come back and catch that little loop and stitch it in when I've uh, got no ribbon in there. Oops, I'll cut that off too, otherwise it'll get in my way. So this is just a, a um, it's like a ball of wool, but it's it's really quite expensive actually. Um, I'll show you at the end what it looks like. And I got it from Woolsey in Geelong. Um, they used to have, I don't know if they have them anymore, but um, they, uh, they're about $30, oops a days, $30 a ball of wool, um, but they are all sort of, the same sort of setup, you know, they have different types of ribbons and textures and stuff in there. So, because it's a different sort of wool, it's sort of making it a little bit harder for me. And I think my foot is a little bit low, so I'm going to loosen that off. And it'll pop up a little. There we go. Hi, Stella. How are you going? So just slowly moving the uh, ribbon or wool, whatever you want to use, into the direction that I want to sew. If I miss, which I just did then, it's no big deal. I can always come back and grab it later. The idea is not to, but sometimes it happens. You try not to stay too long in one position. You end up with like a whole knot, you'll find that out quick enough. So, like that. Because the needle will want to push that in. So, lift it up and move it. Hi, Michelle, are you using a straight stitch? Um, I've actually just changed it to a really, really small zigzag, and it's 0.6 of a zigzag. You can even go 0.5, um, whatever will fit in that little area. Uh, 
do. So I'm just going to go around and around. And just stop. I'm just going to turn that a bit. Um, just so I've got a bit more visual on it. When I get to the edge, which I've got to the edge, my backing actually finishes here, so then I'm going to come back the same way I went. Sorry, my hand's in the way. I'll try and get it out of the way in a sec. There we go. Get to that point, stop and lift. Always making, oops, that was my screwdriver. Always making sure that my ribbon is nice and loose. So this is a westerly foot. I've got my settings on free motion quilting, which I need to just adjust, adjust the tension. And I have it on a very small zigzag. Um, and the foot is called a um, decorative foot. And uh, westerly have sold to uh, America now. So Steady is the company. And I'm dealing with them in buying product from them. So if you uh, are needing of it, let me know and uh, I will do my best to get your product. Because it is hard to find it now. Um, you can see I'm just going backwards, uh, sorry, um, up and down in a sort of a spiral motion. Just stop there and come back. So I might have to pull on that to get that knot through. Oh, I might have just broke my thread because of it. So I just cut that off. So I'll show you what I'm doing so far. Hopefully you can see it. It's a bit glary. Let's see. Can you see that? So it's like a big spiral. So I haven't taken this out anywhere. Even though I've just cut the thread off, it's only cut the top and bottom thread. It won't cut the uh, wool that you've got in there. I'm just going to put the needle down so I can thread behind that little doodah that they've put there just to make my life miserable. Let's see if I can get this to... Oh, I think I might have got it that time. There we go. So just go back to where I was, pull the rest of that through. Um, I might actually move that, sorry. Bear with me while I shove the camera around and it might be better from this angle. There you go. No, Rado, it's actually not. It's um, it's once you get your head around what you've got to do, you, it's not hard. It's very, very easy and it's very rewarding. So I'm just going to hold on to this and cut off. Needle down to start. Keep my thread up here or my, my wool you'll see it change soon and also I've got this funny fabric on the back which seems to be creating its own issues oops I've missed the bobbin I'll go back up cut off just come back up here and have I run out of bobbin have I I don't think so just filled it. All right, let's see what we've got here. Um, I don't want to undo it, so I'm just going to sit that up there, shove the camera back around here. Foot up. And ask the question why aren't you working like you're supposed to? Get in there and do what you're supposed to do. Move that out of the way, foot down, needle down, oh, come on, thread it, haven't I? Okay. I love couching when it, when it goes really, really well. I love it, love it, love it. So you've just got to get your head around it. Trust me, Reto, it is amazeballs. So I'll just keep that wool out of the way. I could cut it off and take it out of the way, but I'm just going to put my foot down so I don't smash my needle. Bring up my bobbin. Get it out of the way. There it is. And put the cover on. 
bring that back over. And then just keep that out of the way. What's going on here? I'll probably do for a new mat. What do you reckon? This one's got tears. It's all sorts of things in it. <laughs> all right, grab that. That might be what's causing the issues underneath. I'm feeling a bit of resistance. <laughs> all right. Now, get that out of there. Get that out of there. Go back to where I started. I'll move the camera in a sec. Pull that wool tight. Hold onto my top thread. Foot down, needle down, needle up. Bring up that bobbin. So you've got a hold of him. There he is under there. So it doesn't get out of your way. Get caught up underneath. Do all the things it shouldn't do. There is your... There it is. Got it. Alrighty. Okay, these things are sent to try us, hey? Alright, let's just put the needle in the down position again. And there is a yak done in couching in Helen Gordon's Facebook page. Oh my god, it's phenomenal. Yeah, it, it's honest to God, it is once you get going and you get into the, the swing of things and you're colouring in with it and you're doing all those. Oh, it's just it's fabulous. And on um, something like the Sweet 16 um, or the Janome's got one as well. Oops, a days. Um, they um, they are really really good to use. It's gone off the edge a bit, so I'll just move it over there and put it down. It's off the edge of my quilt, so it doesn't matter. It's going to get cut off. There we go. So I've got this horrible feeling that the reason why it's grabbing is a bit of a combination. So I just grab my screwdriver, lift up my foot a little because it looks like it's down again. I'm just going to lift it up a fraction. There we go. Get those threads and hairs off from my jumper. I'm coming up to a join in it, and as you can see, there's a knot. Certainly don't want that knot going through the hole of my catching foot. Okay, so as soon as it comes close, oh, put the lock on. Uh, as soon as it comes close, I'm going to um, remove remove that. There we go. That's a bit better. You can see better now. So it's a little bit better. My foot was way too low. So even though this is like decorative and it's couching, it's also going to work as quilting because it is quilted. So I just need to needle up and move that over the other side and move it over there, move it down and come back the other way. And it doesn't help that I'm at the edge of the fabric. It really doesn't. So I just thought I would do some couching on this one, the one with the flowers, because um, it just adds some in more interest to it. And it could make a really, really cool and funky teenage... Um, Decoration, kids, kids' room, or lounge, or whatever. Uh, I'm just gonna right, double check the thread. It's making all gritty noises. That's okay. If it breaks the thread. I'll just start again. And down the needle up. Can you use any wool? Uh, it looks like a white gardenia or white camellia. Yeah, it's literally just a spiral and I've just kept going. Um, yeah, so you can use any wool, but they're the best kind of wool to use. Um, so this one's got quite a, um, like a lumpy, like large and small, but this the large part's not too large. Um, 
so you don't want to use anything that won't go through the center of this or won't create or if it creates any kind of um, um, blockage and uh, tapestry wool works size 8 um, baby's wool size 5 wool all that works um, I've used tapestry wool um, I don't know if you've seen my soldier quilt but um, I did a Anzac Day one called Man in the Mud and that was all done with uh, tapestry wool because um, I had such a huge variety of tones. All right, that's just going to work in perfectly. I'm going to put right off to the edge of the quilt. Um, hi Sharon, how are you going? So that's getting, see how it's, and because it's cream and white, you'll, you'll see the cream more than the white. Now it's changed to like a goldy one now. So I've trimmed it off because I didn't want the knot and I'm going to re, and I have just cut that little bit of thread. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna start on this corner and needle down and needle up and I need to bring my bobbin up but I've cut it so it's quite short. So I've got to grab it, hang on to it. This is how you get your wool into the center here. So then you put your needle down, needle up, all right? Put the wool behind the needle, between the needle and the foot, okay? And pull that forward like a loop, like that. Hold on to your, your uh, tails. Then don't pull your needle too far forward, but just put your needle back down again. And then needle up and pull your fabric. You see that? And it'll pull it through that hole then you go back to where you started hang on to your tails and pull this through till you get to the start Put your needle down grab the thread end of it and you're ready to go so once I do a couple more stitches I can cut that off yes yeah, so yeah, the uh, soldier quilt is actually at the um, the local public pub here um, the local publican bought it. Uh, I think it's on my website. It's called Man in the Mud. It's about two metres tall and around about a metre or so wide. It's quite a big one. All right, so I'm just going to start off. And I'm just doing another circle-y type thing. I haven't changed my stitch or anything. Gonna stop there and I'm gonna get rid of those little tails they were under here. There they are. Right. And I'm just I've got all my wool sitting up here. Um, I'm pretty sure that the man in the mud is on my website. It was from a diorama. I rang up the uh, Canberra War Museum and asked for permission to use their diorama, the photo of their diorama um, for art quilt and um, and that was uh, the man in the mud and they agreed so I did and uh, yeah so it's um, it's uh, now been purchased um, for a private collection which is lovely and uh, it's at the uh, Ropewood Hotel when they open up again I suppose um, for all the world to see hanging up on the wall proudly okay so let's keep going and I'll just move it in the direction the effects you get from this are so worthwhile tolerating learning how to do it they really really are if you get if you've got a long arm or a mid arm like ready you've got a um, sweet 16 there I see so if you've got that it is a hundred times easier on a uh, long arm for some reason um, or the sweet 16 you'll find it'll be easier and I think it just has to do with the amount of throat space you've got um, they're semi-industrial machines and they just tolerate this sort of thing a lot better um, but yeah just just really really easy to use so I'm just going to keep going around the circle. I wasn't going to do this on, on this. I, I sort of thought, oh, I'll just leave it, you know, a bit of stickle and lots of days. 
Um, and then um, I thought, no, no, it needs to be funky. Let's do it funky. So uh, I'm just going to pop that in there. Trim the end off. And we thread it. I'm not changing anything else. Oops, a day's missed it. There we go. Go back to where I finished and cut off. Just needle down a couple of times just to grab that and just keep it out of the way. And fingers crossed it's picked up the bobbin again for me. Has trim off that thread back here where it started. Out of the way. And that is. Alrighty, so we're just going to keep going. Just keep it going in the same direction that we were going in. I need my other chair. It's a bit higher for me. Um, will it work with wool with metallic? Yes, absolutely. This has got metallic in it. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, anything that you can't put through, as long as it's not really, you know, thick, thick. Um, you know those threads like razzles and dazzles. They're eight weight threads and that you can you can use in this way. It could be a little bit thin, so you might have to um, just manipulate it a little bit more. All right, so I've got to the corner of my fabric, so I'm going to work back in the direction that I came from, um, like I did over the other one. Just keeping it moving so I don't get this big knot of threads in the hole. And I need to move the wool to where I'm going. Going around. So, oops, today I just broke another thread. Just cut off. Yeah, it didn't feel too good. No, it's got a bit of a shredding going on there. Just lift the foot, pull that through. I think I caught it in time. I sure did. All right, hang on to it. How cool is that? Okay. And talk about knowing your machine. I know when she put well, I can have tell it, yep. Um, No, it's going to do it again. Okay, so let's see. Oh, yep, yeah, that's why. Just needle up. Just get that stuff on that. It's actually the thread doing naughty things because um, it's getting caught. In there. Oh, yeah, I see, I see, see the blind man. Okay, it's getting caught. In behind this little thing here. So I need to use that, otherwise it'll flop around everywhere. Just grab that again. Third time, fourth time, who's counting? <laughs> All right, go back to where I finished off. Needle down and a couple of stitches there. And just get to there. Just give that a dirty grab. Grab onto him, cut him off. There he goes. Go in the direction I'm going. I mean, the thread could be cracking it because there is metallic in this, which, you know, can also make it um, a little bit gritty for the, the, thre uh, the, uh, the thread. I am using a good thread. I'm using Egyptian cotton. Um, so it's definitely a good thread. So if your wool is in that position like that, then you're going to miss stitching it. So if I hold it like... I press the button and I hold it up like that. If I, I draw it while I'm going forward, but as soon as I go backwards, it's going to be really nasty. It's going to miss it. 
right, so I'd go sideways, I'd have to move my hand over sideways, be able to catch it, which, I mean, you're welcome to do this if you're wanting to. Um, there's only so many things you can do with one hand. All right, so I've got up to, oh, there goes the screwdriver again. I've got up to the side of the, uh, the um, flowers. So I'm just going to go down here. And what I'm going to do is needle up, foot up, just bring it forward a little, make sure I don't catch my sewing thread, find that little darling somewhere in there, there it is, cut right at the base of that, take it out, put your needle down and give it a good stitch, stitch in that end, yeah, there we go. Cut off, which is silly again because I've got to do it up here but anyway. I'll grab that, bring it over to here. I want it to start here, so needle down, needle up. Bring up that bobbin. It's only going to be short. We'll grab him. There we go. Grab a hold of it. Put down, needle down, needle up. Put the start of your wool behind or between the needle and the foot okay and then bring it forward so i'll move the camera over here you might actually be able to see better again there you go so i've brought it forward I'm not pulling too tight i don't want to bend the needle i'm holding on to my little threads needle down needle up hold on to your threads lift up your foot and pull that through you just need a little bit of it through and you get back to where you started foot down hang on to those little threads again there we go and pull that through until you get to the start okay right up to the start go there put the needle down a couple of times to grab that that wool so I'm just going to go up to here and then I'm going to stop. I might come across to here and then I'm going to start there and go there. All right. So I will just stitch away. Now you look at the start of that and you'll go, ew, but we're going to trim that off or stitch it in later. So don't freak out about that little bit of furry bit there. Um, we're going to lift up the needle, do what we did before, pull it out a little, loosen off. I don't want to cut off my sewing machine thread, so I've got to just find where that stop and starts. There it is. Trim off the bottom, grab that out of the way, foot down, and just stitch that in. Yeah. You can go back and up, up and back of it, up and back of it, and and stitch in that little bit of that tail too that we missed before. Come back down. Um, I'm going to just skip down here, follow this around, because no one's going to know that I did that unless you tell them. And come over to here, needle up, put that behind between the foot and the needle. Lift up and pull forward, foot down, needle down, needle up, lift, grab that, pull it through. Alright, just going to pull that down there, that might be the bobbin thread, it's alright. Bring that right all the way up there, keep pulling on it until I get to the end, where I want to stop. Needle down, make sure she's stitched in. And scissors all the way, and just keep going. Any messiness in that we can always clean up. That's the beauty of this this process. Um, oh, it's going to break again. Lucky I'm at the edge. There we go. All 
All right, let's cut that off. So I finish there and take that out. So <clears throat> it's shredding the thread again. So I'll just lift the foot up and see if I can get that through there. And it'll go through the needle. It's a big eyed needle, it should. It does. That's right on the edge of the fabric, so that's really good. So I'm just gonna stitch that right in, come back and just stitch that down at the other end here, which will help clean it up a little. Whoops, it has went off me thing. And oh, nearly got my thingy. Just come back and forwards over that a little and cut off. Give it a bit of a clean up. Okay. Sorry, my hand's in the way. Okay, you can see that I've done, oops, it is, I've done that. So see all the, the couching there? How cool does it look? So I'm just going to do um, another lot down the bottom corner, the opposite corner. So you're going to have one, two, three, four. There's four corners, so we're going to do four swirls, needle down and up. I'm going to tolerate and persevere with this thread. I think it's got to do more with my machine needing a service. <laughs> I don't think it's a thread much at all. So bring that through and hold on to them. Needle down, that tail in, put it down. Okay, keep it out of the way for a sec. I uh, went stalking for the man in the mud quilt. Yes, love it. Yeah, it's a good one, isn't it? Thanks, Rado. Yeah, it won. Um, it got a highly commended, which was lovely. I, I mean, I when I and that was the first quilt I actually entered into any competition, and um, I was I was quite chuffed to even get selected to have my quilt on show. You know, so it was lovely. Okay, back over this way, needle up, move it over, get over, needle down, okay, pull it over, there we go. So see that little, little bit of fluff there at the start, we can fix that up later, just stitch over it like I did the others. See if that helps. I want to finish this so that I can show you that you know you can do these things from just a couple of techniques and you can make something really good and funky, especially for the kids. They um they love this sort of stuff. It's textile, even if you did it in bright colours for little kids, they would love it. Um, you could paint some of it if you wanted to, but I think the raw edge applique looks really funky and it, and like I say, young kids love it because it's, um, especially little young kids, uh, primary school girls and that, boys even, without, you know, maybe trucks or something. Um, they love it because it's textile-y. Okay. Let's keep that away. Uh, yes, it is, um, Robin. It's in, um, just keep scrolling, folks. It's way down the list of pics. <laughs> it was a while ago that I made it. Sorry. There's a couple of pics there. I don't even know how the heck they got in there. It was really weird. I think I got them out. All right, so this one started all the way over here. I'll just get rid of him. Oh, you gave up on that, yeah. Sometimes, like especially the long arm, I will actually give up if it just keeps doing it over and over and over again. I just walk away in the end. I just go, right, you're not playing nice today. I don't want to play your game. 
and it's time to turn it off. <laughs> um, especially if it's someone else's quilt because I don't want to have to keep repairing the thread and taking the chance that I'm doing damage anywhere. Um, sometimes it can be the quilt that sets it off. It can be all the, the seams and stuff. Just a bit too much for the, um, the needle to go through. All right, coming back. That's the edge of the fabric. See, I was thinking that this could actually be a really cool pillow for a young girl. Because it's sort of, now I put this metallic-y stuff on, it's got that bling factor. Oh, nearly got my finger in the way. I might even just slow it down a bit. Maybe that's half the problem. It's going too fast. Doesn't like it. Like that much either, does it? Oh, there we go. Um, hi, Judy. I'm hand sewing while I watch. Nice, Stella. Uh, it's got some shredding going on there. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Where are you? There you are. Yeah, some days they just. Give you the earrets, don't it? Yeah, see this keeps collecting up behind that thing there, but I know if I don't have it behind that little doodah there, it's probably gonna get caught somewhere else. Sorry, I've got my hand in the way again. There we go. No, we don't. God, that's hard to get from behind. Uh, do, oops, it does. There we go. Get that out of there. So it's getting shredded up in this thing. Bring it out. Oh, bugger. Bring it out a little. There we go. Let's try that, see if that helps. Because I know it's only supposed to be a guide and it seems to be creating issues. So I've opened it up a bit so that should help it smooth through. It seems to be getting caught where it shouldn't. Alright. No. Don't know why I bother. Um, hi Judy, how are you going? Just trying to thread my needle again for the seventh time. Okay, here we go. Back to where I started. Yeah, so I've got it in there. It seems to be a bit stuck in there. I don't like that. Hmm. that thread again go back this way so let's see how it's caught up in there it's got like the clicks across like it's actually yeah it's forcing it in there hmm anywho I'd like to talk to Mr Mechanic about that I think we can go back one more row around there. Perfect. Yeah, I've slowed the machine down. Just um, I know it's mind numbing, but um, just to slow down the, the shredding. So the other way of doing it too is you can spread that out, go okay we're going to finish about there, same day didn't go to plant, same today didn't go to plant, yeah, 
have missed most of the tutorials today, but we'll catch up on replays later. Yeah, absolutely. And mine, um, after probably after the weekend's done, I'll probably have them all up on YouTube. I've got a couple up already. Um, but the one that's with Craft Alive, that stays with them. God only knows if that one worked the other day. I have no idea. Alrighty. So, grab the thread. Kneel down, needle up. Let's bring up that little bobbin, little booger up under there. Hold on to him. Needle down, needle up. Put it behind. Oh, there we go. Put it behind the, um, the needle and the uh, foot. Needle down, hold on to your tails. Grab those tails. Lift and pull it through. Oops, wrong one. Pull your tail through, like that. Hold on to those tails. Put down and pull it until you get to the end, almost. Then needle down. Grab that. Make sure you stitch on it or over it. Get that going in the right direction. And off we go. So when I do it on the long arm, oh my god, do I, I go like, you know, ten times as fast as this. It's just so much quicker. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think it's got to do with... Um, that little clip there that seems to be causing issues. Not so much the thread. All right, so so any of those little fluffy bits, you can just you know cut them out. So this I can actually finish off that bit there. Go okay, and speed her up a little. Do a bit of a, a knot off. There we go. And cut off. Um, Craft Alive was very disappointing. Yeah, know what you mean, Rado. I think we could just forget about the whole day and start a fresh tomorrow. What were the classes like? Could you actually get into them today, or was it, you know, because, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I reported the stuff. Um, I haven't heard back, but I'm sure that when they're not so flat out, trying to make sure everything goes well. I mean, I. Rado sent me photos of the lady, and then when I tried to log back in there, there she was again. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Sitting there in her bed, watching whatever, and um, she's on my channel. It was weird. It was really weird. <clears throat> All right, so next one is this corner, and that'll be the last one. And then I'll show you what I've got. I'll take that a full screen shot of it and then that blue little fluff there is from my jumper by the way right. so needle down needle up bring up that bobbin hang on to the little booger needle down oh, I had to take that off I'm getting hot again all right needle up behind the needle and between the needle and foot yeah, that lady, that was really random. I mean, let alone that the, no one could see the class properly because um, the actual, um, what do they call it, the uh, the quality of the video. But the fact that all you could see was that lady was just really weird. <laughs> Poor love. Was that you, Rado, in the picture? <laughs> was that you, Rado, in the picture? Is that a picture of you? <laughs> so this is a fluffy one. It's got little fluffy bits of metallic in it. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I didn't think it was. Um, <laughs> but it was, I've got, I've screenshotted like the photo you sent me and yeah, I, I'll, I'm going to have to ring them I think. 
Um, I know that they're flat out and, and it's, a, it's a really big thing. They've got so many um, people, you know, oh, sellers and, and uh, tutors and tutoring and so many different factors, you know, from scrapbooking and knitting and all these sort of things. Um, quilting as well, of course. Um, all sorts of craft factors and you know they're trying to get it so that it works for everyone um, a lady hijacked Michelle's webinar yeah yeah the lady did she hijacked my webinar um, I don't know whether you could even hear me let alone see me I don't think you saw me you couldn't see what I was doing I'm doing it again on um, uh, tomorrow so fingers crossed I don't get hijacked again <laughs> so I'm gonna try and talk to them if not tonight tomorrow they probably won't want to talk to me tonight <laughs> they've probably had a, a crappy day the poor loves it's a family business so and I do feel for them but the customers you know they pay and they want to oh, 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 they want to get what they've paid for I reckon it's that little thing there it's getting, yeah, it's getting behind that. Look at that. And it gets a little bit of a knot there. And then I get, come on, under, under, under. Come on. Where are you? You under there? Um, yeah, and of course then, you know, you've got unhappy customers. They've paid for these things that they're not getting to see and yada, yada, yada. So, and I don't want my customers unhappy. Um, I don't want anyone's customers unhappy. So I've got to cut this thread because it's just doing a spaz thing. There we are. Nope, you were replaced completely. Yeah, right, okay. So nothing. All you saw was that lady. Couldn't even hear me. That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know how she got the link because that link she shouldn't have been able to get into like that. So how that happened, no idea. So that, that is really interesting. So I'll, um, yeah. And, and we pay to do these classes and, and, you know, we pay for the, you know, to have like, to be a part of, a part of this. It's not, you know, we, we don't get it for free. Um, we get a lot for our money. Um, and they've been brilliant and they are a really brilliant crew honestly the craft alive team are really amazing and very very understanding um, and they work with you the whole way and I can't fault them but this um, webinar thing has just been torture for some people it's a, sh it's a shame really So I don't have a huge amount of this glittery one, so I'm going to make that a bit wide and see if I can get back one more time just to fill up that gap. Let's keep going. Let's hope that thread just holds out long enough. Looking good. stitch it down till it gets to its end. There we go. E -e 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 -e. Stitch, 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 that's it there. Alright, so let's cut it off. I do have a big gap there, here. Um, let's see if I've got a little bit of more of that other stuff. I don't think I have. Yeah. Well, I do have a little bit of this one, so maybe... Uh, yeah, I'll just leave it. Mm. Or, I don't know. Maybe. Sorry, I'm thinking out loud now. Sorry about that. Alright, I'm just having a look. So, 
this is what they are so I'll turn it this way so you can see it's like a shank and it's got all these beautiful different textured ribbons and all sorts of things and yeah it's it's a, literally like $39 or something like that it's horrific but in saying that it's a lot of fun so I'm thinking I might just grab that one and just pull a bit out cut the ends you're missing out on a retreat today Michelle because of craft a lot I am Judy no not very good for the teachers giving their time we can't watch them yeah 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 I agree but we'll keep the fingers crossed and keep it positive um, I probably wouldn't have gone to the, the retreat anyway. Um, I've got so much going on in the background that you, you guys just don't see. But, um, yeah, probably wouldn't have got to the retreat anyway. But anywho, um, I'm going to just lift that up, get under there, put down. Uh, that goes behind. And kneel down. You could use a shoelace, you know. You could use a shoelace. As long as you can get it through the hole in that, that little doodah, you're laughing. Okay, there we go. Look through. I'll just move this camera so you guys can see what the heck I'm doing. <clears throat> Moving it through. There we go. Tails have gone everywhere. Just bring that up here. Oh, oh little booger. Start again. Okay, let's try and bring that up this way. There we go. Out of the way. And down. That goes behind. Bring it forward. Needle down, needle up. Bring that up and bring it through. There we go. Now don't pull it too far through now this time. I'm just going to trim that off because it's sort of in my way. Yeah, that oh, that huge fabric is awesome. I've got that stuff. I'll be going to Mum's um, on Tuesday next week, so I'll be bringing it with me then. So it'll be at Mum's so um, in Geelong on Tuesday. So I'm going to just move this one over this way and do that out there. Just because I can. Stop. Cut off. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring that through like that. Trim it off there. Watch. There. Hold on to this end. The large flowers are amazeballs. Honest to God, they just really, really, really um, make things pop. Um, oh, oh, oh. Did I get it? Oh, just, oh, maybe. Did I get it? Let's hope. Oh, yeah. Damn, I'm good. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, so I should have your fabric, um, and I think it was Leslie as well. And there's another lady who's in Geelong. Think of her name now. Um, she was occasionally. I was trying to think who she is. And she thinks she lives in Corio. Just gonna go up here. And I'm gonna bring it over here. Just travelled a little bit then. I just did a bit of a sneaky dog leg just to keep the movement going. Um Anywho, the person who is there, um, I could actually organise for them to go and pick it up from Mum, um, not that far away. Um, I'm just going to stitch that little end in that I had a bit of a mishap with. Just get that cut off. I don't think there was any other parts that I missed as such. Oh, there one. There's one there. So sometimes when you miss it, what you'll see is this. So see how it's come off the stitch? It's like away from the actual fabric it's only a little bit because it's obviously caught the hairs on it <laughs> but I am going to stitch over that whether it be wobbly or not it's getting stitched over Oops, it is. there we go cut off and 
back without a bit of a trim. She's a bit hairy. And that one. All right. So I'm gonna um, just zoom this out. I'm gonna, ah. Okay. Let me just. G'day. <laughs> zoom out. I'm going to turn it around so you can see. There it is there. Look at that, baby. How cool is that? So. Oh, thanks, Reto. How cool is that? Look at it. It's all quilted. It's couched. I've done the raw edge applique. She's creamy. She's funky. And she's got bling. If I wanted to, I could get some gold thread and I could put some gold thread in there or in the centres even. Um, but it doesn't really need it. But that looks awesome. I like that. So I'll send you all, or I'll put it up as a full picture later. And um, thanks for joining me again. I hope you have a go at couching. It is fun. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.